So you're sitting in your chair reading your Bible like a good Christian when you arrive at the passage in 1 Kings 7 uh, where Hiram is building the bronze sea for the temple. So then he made the sea of cast metal. It was round, 10 cubits from brim to brim and 5 cubits high. And a line of 30 cubits measured its circumference. And then suddenly you get a flashback to math class. Oh no, this is a mathematical impossibility. There is clearly a mistake in the Bible, and my entire life has been based on a lie. I must now proceed to renounce my faith and become an atheist. It is a little hard to imagine, isn't it, that the inventor of the laws of mathematics and the creator of everything would not be able to get the ratio between the circumference and the diameter of a circle right, isn't it? This passage certainly has resulted in some smug comments from atheists who take great pleasure in asserting that the biblical value for pi is 3. So what if the Christians were allowed to come to our schools and then they could teach everyone that pi is like three and and then they would grow up the next gen generation of engineers and they would think that pi is three and then they would try to construct something round and it, it would have the circumference three times the di diameter. And uh, then that would create a major paradox and the universe might implode. The good part, of course, is that it offers the rest of us some relief from their talk of unicorns and the flying spaghetti monster routine, but still I feel inclined uh, to set a few things straight. First of all, we need to keep our genre straight. There is a difference, say, between a historical document and a lab report, for example, when it comes to rounding. If we assume the circumference is correct, then we can derive from that a diameter of 9.549 cubits. If you go ahead and round that to the nearest cubit, what do you get? Now, if we assume the circumference was slightly more than 30 and rounded down, this wouldn't have been too outrageous. Too much for your lab report, but acceptable in a historical document. So that doesn't really do it for my inner mathematician. Some have argued that since the thickness of the sea was a hand's breadth, which is about a sixth of a cubit, assuming we use the royal cubit, the diameter must have been the outer diameter, while the circumference must have been the inner circumference. The diameter corresponding to that would have been approximately nine and two-thirds of a cubit, which works out very well. It seems a little strange, though, to measure the circumference on the inside. The easiest way to measure circumference is to use a rope and measure how much of it it takes to reach around the entire sea. That's a lot easier to do on the outside than on the inside. Instead, let's look in the text for more hints about the shape of the sea. Maybe that could shed some light on the matter. We've already learned that the sea is round and was a hand's breadth thick. If we look closer, we'll also see that the brim of it was flared out like a drinking cup and shaped like the flower of a lily. That means that it will look something like this. Now, if you were to measure the diameter of this bowl from brim to brim, where would you measure? And how about the circumference? Well, there's two options. You could either put the rope around the tip of each petal of the lily, which would make the circumference smaller than if you made it a perfect circle. But that seems like an unnecessarily difficult way to do it. It would be a lot easier to just put the rope underneath the flare of the brim. Depending on the size of the flare and the number of petals, each option might yield correct results. Quite honestly, if I was an atheist trying to convert Christians into my religion, I'd much rather point to the discrepancy between 1 Kings 7 and 2 Chronicles 4 concerning the amount of water the sea could hold. The text in 1 Kings says 2,000 baths, whereas 2 Chronicles says 3,000. <coughs> 
Now, before you go and have another crisis of faith, let me remind you that a gallon is 3.79 liters. At the same time, a gallon is 4.55 liters, and a gallon is also 4.4 liters. The first is a US gallon, the second is the imperial gallon that's used in England and Canada, uh, and the third is a US dry gallon. So if you're in England with a three gallon bucket, and an American comes and tells you that he can fit three and a half gallons in it, he's not lying. He's just using a different gallon. Now we don't know exactly how much a bath is. The size chart that you have in the back of your Bible is basically derived from volume calculations from these two passages. So the natural conclusion would be to assume that they're using two different baths. And since Second Chronicles is written after the Babylonian captivity, it's not unlikely that the size of the bath used there may have been inf influenced from that. Yeah, right, like, like anyone's gonna buy into that. They're like totally uh, like, like believing in the flying spaghetti monster and fairies. And, uh, and that, that sketching thing was like totally ripped from, from my heart. And how, how Christian is that, Mr. Better Than Thou Art?